Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a super cardioid pattern microphone from Joby. This is the Wavo. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Joby Wavo. Now, there's two versions of this on the market. There is the standard Wavo, and there's also the Wavo Mini, or Wavo Micro, which is designed for smaller cameras, that kind of thing. But this, essentially, is designed for pretty much most people. This works with both DLSR cameras, or CSCs, and also can work with mobile phones. And all the leads required to get it up and running are included, apart from the USB Type-C adapters, or the iPhone adapters, if you do need one of them. These do terminate in a 3.5 jack plug with either TRS or TRRS, depending on the setup you need. Normally it's TRS for things like cameras and TRRS for things like mobile phones, etc. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get on and have a look at the packaging, see what we get inside, and then we'll give it a quick test. So packaging wise, uh, yeah, pretty decent. Looks very nice, very presentable, all that kind of stuff. So you've got on the front there, you've got the Juby Wavo, and it's shown there with the wind muff actually attached already. You can actually remove that if you want to, but again, we'll look at that a little bit later on. It does say on the front that it's designed for both camera and mobile devices, and it's got superior sound quality for on-camera microphones. So yeah, all well and good. Now you don't actually have to use this on camera if you don't want to. It is designed really to be used on a camera mounted to make things look nice and easy. But if you want to, you can actually get an extension cable, put it onto a tripod mount somewhere. So if maybe you're in a studio setup such as this, then you can always plug it into the camera and then have the microphone kind of on your desk or on a mount somewhere just out of shot. So it's not specifically for mounting on a camera, but that is certainly what it's intended for. Moving around to the side of the packaging, it goes on about the foam muff, which is designed to eliminate light wind noise. It isn't a dead cat, so it isn't going to eliminate really strong wind, so light breezes, that kind of thing, should be absolutely fine. We will be taking it out into the garden a little bit later, because it is actually blowing a little bit of a gale out there today, so we will do some outdoor testing a little bit later on, see how well it actually does. Now, I have tested it already on another camera, which is this one here, the Lumix uh, G7, with both the pop shield and with it completely off. And actually, between the two, there is very, very minimal difference between the two. It doesn't seem to take anything away, so the actual wind muff or the pop shield actually does work extremely well. It does incorporate a dual mount, as you can see on the picture there. So with a lot of microphones on the market now, uh, certain names I won't mention, but they normally have a single mount on there. So the microphones do tend to sort of flop around a little bit, whereas this does seem to be extremely stable. So if you're out in the field and you're doing some running gun photography, the last thing you want is your microphone bouncing around, hitting the side of your camera, whatever the case may be. Anything like that can introduce noise into your content, which is preferably avoidable. On the back, it goes into a little bit more detail about the connectivity and how to attach the wind muff, etc., and other things like the super cardioid pattern, the superior sound quality, the compact size, the Ryko dual layer mounting system and also the fact that there's no battery required. Now this is a really important thing for a lot of camera users. The last thing you want to be doing, there's so much to check on already, you've got to make sure you've got enough room on your SD card, make sure your camera battery is charged, all those kinds of things, make sure the picture's in shot, the focus is right, the lighting's okay. The last thing you want to do is to be checking to see if your microphone is actually working or not. Now the beauty of this is it doesn't require any power, so you can just plug it straight into your camera or into your phone, and you know it's gonna last the distance, even if possibly your camera doesn't. On the other side of the box, it shows some mounting options for both for a mobile phone, which you can use. There is separate adapters available from the Joby website. All this stuff I will be listing in the video description below, and you can check all these out for yourselves from Joby Direct or from our Amazon affiliate links. So let's take a quick look at the specifications. So it is a electret condenser transducer. The polar pattern is super cardioid. So essentially what that means is it's gonna be focused on a specific area and it will try and block out noise in the surrounding areas. Now for us, particularly in the studio at the moment, I'm wearing a lav mic. So it does tend to pick up quite a lot of extra noise in the background. You can possibly hear the cat in the background scratching and she's got those bells on. And that's the sort of things that we ideally, with this kind of microphone, will try to reject. So if you're doing, again, running gun photography and you're out on the streets, if you've got someone that you're interviewing or that you're actually trying to get a point across on camera, aiming the microphone at you specifically will reject some of the other noise around you, such as cars in the background, all those kinds of things. Maybe if you're in a crowd of people, it will try and reject some of the noise of the crowd and concentrate on where your voice is coming from to get your message across to your viewer. Frequency response is 35 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. 
So that's actually pretty decent. That means that you're gonna get some of those low frequencies, which actually some of the other mics on the market, which I've looked at, do actually emit. Some of the more high profile brands actually do actually limit the frequency, the low end, to around about 100 hertz and above. So this will actually get you some of that lower bass tones into your recording. And again, for audio work, this is actually quite important, especially if you've got a relatively deep voice. It doesn't make you sound like your Mickey Mouse or something. Signal to noise ratio is 75 decibels SPL. The sensitivity is minus 38 dB and the plug is a 3.5 mil TRS or TRRS connection, as we said. Uh, dimensions are 9.3 by 7.1 by 7.5 centimeters and the net weight is 35 grams. Now that is actually really important. The majority of the construction of this is actually plastic, which is actually brilliant because the last thing you wanna be doing if you've got a nice camera, nice lens, and you've got all your other kit, you don't really wanna be adding more weight to it. You want it to be nice and portable. So 35 grams, this is absolutely perfect for transport purposes. Okay, so that's enough blithering on. Let's take it out of the box and see what we actually get. So in the packaging, what do we get? So first of all, we get our instruction manual. This is actually pretty simple. There's very, very little you need to do, but even for those that are not particularly uh, informed on how these things work, there is a very simple pictorial guide there. So you know what plugs in where and how everything fits together. So yeah, all very good. And there's also multi-language versions, etc., all that kind of stuff. But you can take a look at that. I'll put some stills in so you can check that out for yourselves. This is what we're more concerned about, the actual contents itself. So what do we get first of all? So first of all, we get the pop shield or wind muff. Again, this is gonna be suitable for light breeze, that kind of thing. It isn't a dead cat. So if you do want a dead cat for this particular mic, there is one available from JB, which again, I'll put some links in the video description. So if you maybe wanna get this and you do wanna go out into the Himalayas or something where the wind is hurling through, then you can block out some of that noise with a dead cat. But this, for most people, is gonna be absolutely fine. If you live in a relatively good area where the weather is nice and it's not too windy, you should be absolutely fine with this. Again, if you're using this in an indoor setup on a tripod or something, then this will stop some of the, uh, the pops and some of the S's that we tend to get whilst filming. Next up, we get our cables. So there are two cables included in this, and they're on this really nice kind of elasticated or springy design. So 3.5 mil jack plugs, one end will have the TRS, which is standard for the microphone, and the other end will either have TRS, which is the one we'll use for cameras, or TRRS, so there's four actual rings on the unit there, which is for mobile phone use. So most Android phones or anything with a 3.5 mil jack plug should be absolutely fine. And actually some computers now, microphone jacks, they are combo jacks, so you can use that with some laptops and computers. Again, if you're not too sure, let us know in the video description or the comments and we'll try and help you out wherever we can. So you do get two of these cables included, which is nice to see. A lot of other manufacturers actually only have one or give you the option of buying the other one separately for maybe $10 or so, which I think is a little bit of a tight thing to do. So this is really nice that Joby have decided to include both cables in the box straight away. Now actually talking of price, in a moment here in the UK, you can pick one of these up for around about 65, 70 pounds, which I think is actually pretty decent value for money and certainly competitive with other mics on the market. Although I have noticed that some of the specs of this are a little bit better, as we said about the frequency response is a little bit wider. So if you do want that really nice sound stage to your recordings, this is probably worth a look. So last but not least is the actual microphone itself. So as you can see, this is uh, actually quite a cute little unit. It's not huge. Some of the shotgun mics we used to see are absolutely huge and have a really length on them, which is terrible because once you actually get it in front of the camera, depending on what lens you're using, if you're using a pretty wide angle lens, Generally, you'll see the top part of the microphone just peeking into the shot, which is absolutely horrendous for most video makers. If you're doing some simple blogging and not particularly bothered, then I guess it's not the end of the world. But it's nice that this is quite short and quite stubby, so it's not gonna get in the way of your lens. Also, like I said, we've got the dual, the lyre type mount, and actually it does hold it in very well. I did find on some other microphones that just with a single mount, it does tend to rock and roll a little bit, which again, can end up having the microphone tapping parts of the actual camera body itself, which can introduce noise. So it's really nice to see. It's really nice and simple in the uh, slightly brighter color. Personally, I would have preferred this to be a black color, but again, you can't have it all, but certainly does the job. And also on the bottom, you've got the built-in mount for your camera, so the cold shoe, and that's on the thumb screw, so you can just tighten up or loosen it as you see fit. Another nice thing is actually, it is all molded into one unit. This doesn't come off, it is all fixed in place, which again eliminates one of those extra areas where you can get either vibration or kind of weird knocks and things where the actual microphone is slopping around actually in the mount itself. 
So this eliminates that altogether. On the back, we've got a little bit of the uh, Joby logo there and also our entry points for our 3.5 mil jack. So all we need to do, we're gonna be using the 3.5 mil TRS one. Just plug one into the back there and that plugs in nice and securely. There is a little swivel on it so you can move it around if you need to. Then all you need to do is to grab your camera of choice. Again, this is the Lumix G7 and we'll just loosen off that. Put it into our cold shoe mount on the top. Tighten up the thumb screw. Nice and tight. And that is mounted. Very, very simple to do. And I'll say, all you need to do then is plug in the jack plug on the side, which goes in nicely. And because this is kind of springy or coiled, it does move around a little bit, but it's not tapping on the camera. And again, depending on where your uh, input is for your camera, you can move that around so that it doesn't hit anywhere. So in that position there, that's absolutely fine. Okay. You can move it however you want to. But it's actually really good, really simple. Again, super cardioid microphone. So it's gonna try and pick up anything which is essentially in line with the front there. So as you go off axis, the voice will deteriorate. So if you're trying to do some camera work and maybe you're pointing forward and you wanna get your voice over, all you need to do is just undo this on the top, slide it around and you can turn it around 180 degrees and you can have it facing you. So you can do your voiceover work whilst you're filming what is in front of you. So very, very flexible and very easy to do. He says, fumbling around with it. Although I'm doing this on camera, so it's not always the easiest of time to do things. So this is the setup you'd have normally. So this is with the pop shield completely removed. If you want to put the pop shield on, it's very easy to do. And there is actually like a locator in the bottom there. And you can pretty much tell how it goes in, just fits in, slides in. And you've got the nice Joby logo on there, which I think looks uh, pretty professional. And I think if you're carrying this around and doing some filming, I think it actually does look the part. And again, because of where it's mounted, it's quite high up away from that main camera body. And even with the massive amount of movement on there, it's not gonna come anywhere near the lens or the camera body. So that is quite a lot of movement there and a lot of flexibility. So it's not gonna hit the camera and you wouldn't really wanna be doing that kind of thing with a camera anyway, but even if you did, the microphone is gonna stay exactly where it should be. So this is probably a good time to do some uh, testing and see what it actually sounds like. Okay, so this is a sound test of the Joby Wavo on its mount and currently there is also the windshield attached at the top. So hopefully the voice is coming through nice and clearly and the background noise is being eliminated somewhat. At the moment in the house there is the cats. Uh, Calf is literally just over there on our keyboard tapping away. So hopefully the noise from that is being shielded somewhat. I can hear the cat scratching as well and hear the, the sort of jangly bell going. So be interested to see actually in post if this does come through or not. So we'll uh, get back to that shortly, but now I'm gonna test it with the wind muff taken off. Okay, so as you can see, this is the uh, pretty much exactly the same shot, same distance, kind of arm's length. And yeah, with the microphone muff off, I can see I think the levels are going up a little bit more looking at the screen. So they do seem to be peaking a little bit more. So the wind muff will actually kind of take off some of the noise levels. So you may have to adjust your DB on your camera or maybe in post-production, amp them up a bit. But hopefully it still sounds good. And uh, like I say, Kath is still typing away in the background and she's clicking away on her mouse. So it'd be interested to see if that comes out. The cat's still scratching. So again, it'd be good to see if that actually comes out. And uh, I suppose we'd better do some outdoor testing to see if the pop shield actually does anything for wind noise. It isn't a dead cat, so it shouldn't do a great deal, but under light wind conditions, it should be absolutely fine. So let's take it outside and we'll give it a go. So this is out in the garden now, and there is a very mild breeze. If I uh, just spin around, you can see the uh, washing there is blowing in the next door neighbor's garden. So there is actually quite a breeze at the moment, and it is coming across. So if we step out here a little bit more, then yeah, maybe you should be able to pick that up. But this is what it's like actually outdoors in the open. So what do you think? Has it blocked out enough? Is it enough for you? Is it gonna be suitable for your blogging needs? Let's get back inside, because it's getting pretty cold out here. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen, and I thought this would be a good place to start. The kettle is currently boiling, so if I uh, quickly spin around, you can see the kettle's on there, we're making a cup of tea. So this is the noise that you're coming through. Obviously, this is what you'll hear, so in theory, if I turn all the way around and away from the camera, or away from the kettle even, that should have taken out a lot of the noise of the kettle boiling in the background. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but we'll find out in the post-production, and then we'll update that in the, uh, the final review at the end of the video. But yeah, I think hopefully, it should probably pick it up. 
you can be the judge of that and see how much of it, it is actually blocking out. Okay, so there we go. There are some tests. Hopefully uh, that goes some way to help you make up your mind if it is the right vlogging mic for you. I'm actually pretty impressed. The noise reduction for the kettle sound wasn't brilliant, but it certainly did take some of that edge off it. Looking at some of the peak meters on the camera, it did seem to reduce it a little bit. It didn't completely remove it, which I guess is probably a good thing because when you're out vlogging, maybe you're doing, I don't know, maybe some seaside work or maybe you're at a fun fair, a concert, whatever the case may be, you don't want to get rid of those sounds entirely, but it's nice just to have them not so they're so focused in the kind of sound stage. And obviously with me talking over the top of it, you can still hear me crystal clear and everything I wanted to say came through and was understandable which is essentially what a microphone is all about. It's about getting your message across to your viewer. Having the ability to get those lower tones in actually makes it sound really nice. I do like the sound profile of this, even though it's not powered or anything, it's just coming straight through and straight into the Lumix camera. In fairness, the Lumix cameras do have pretty decent preamps and the sound quality generally is quite good with them anyway, but it's certainly much better than what you get from the in-camera version. So if you're looking to up your game a little bit and you think that the Juby brand is something that you want to invest in, then yeah, I would certainly recommend it. I can't see any reason why not to. It ticks all the boxes, it's lightweight, it's portable, it's flexible, it does essentially what it's intended to do. So let me know in the comments what you think of it. But in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.